There we go. Let's go. Woo! Hello and welcome to Talking Balls. It's the international week and that makes it hard talking about football because no one gives a shit. There's not much to be excited about during the international break and fans have been moaning for ages about how it gets in the way of club football. It's just a bit boring more than anything else. That is until one of your star players gets injured. This week, Alexis Sanchez picked up a hamstring injury while on international duty with Chile. Then the news came out that the Chile manager planned to use Alexis Sanchez in the game next week. Now, a hamstring injury needs rest. You've seen it happen many, many times before when a player's risk and he ends up spending the next three months on the sidelines because the manager pushed it a little bit too quickly. No Arsenal fan cares about Chile. Arsenal plays wages and ultimately it's Arsenal will have to pay for the fallout. At some point, we reach the moment where the majority of football fans stop caring about international football. Please don't let Deli Alley get injured. Don't touch my fucking Harry Kane! But what can be done? Should we bin internationals all together? Should we seed the top teams so that they don't have to go through the qualifying stage or something else? Let us know in the comments below what you think. The Respect the Ref campaign in England has always been something that most people sniff at. Refs are always annoying, especially when they seem to make consistently poor decisions against your team. That, by the way, is a myth. It's bullshit. Everyone thinks that. Craig, what do you think about referee bias? It's been a campaign against Chelsea for years, mate. No, it's... No, it wasn't. It doesn't matter. The point of it, though, is that so players don't display this kind of behaviour that might influence kids and non-professionals outside the game. So imagine the shock when a player in Mexico nutted the ref during an amateur game after being shown a red card. That's bad enough, but the ref died. As annoying as refs are, just, I mean, give them a break. Many get decisions wrong and many get decisions right, but under no circumstances should you ever, ever headbutt a ref. Don't headbutt anybody. Ne never, just don't headbutt anybody. It's nearly Christmas and obviously that means a brand new John Lewis advert. We've got to be surprised when they base the narrative around Phil Jones and his unconventional methods of returning from injury. So it's top comments and James is on holiday, my little dwarfed Brad Pitt. That's what he looks like. He looks like a miniature underdeveloped Brad Pitt in his heyday. Actually, not even a good Brad Pitt, the, the older one now that he's gone a bit to seed. Okay, first one is from Tony Henry. He says, trying to leave Islington for Tottenham. Who the fuck does that? Tottenham don't have local fans, mostly from Middlesex. Arsenal 2-1 on Sunday. Well, actually, the problem with Arsenal fans coating off Spurs fans from coming from Middlesex is that they're missing the point completely, as you'd expect. Arsenal fans had to move eight miles. Spurs have never, never moved. So what you're actually doing is you're making fun of Tottenham because the council redefined their borders. It's very weak. Nyla Kay, she asks, NGL, what does that mean? <laughs> uh, not going to lie, really want to know what Flav's girlfriend thinks of his public self, his YouTube self, and podcast about self. Podcast Flav she finds very sexy. YouTube Flav she also finds very sexy. Uh, normal Flav, uh, not so much. And she loves it when I refer to myself in the third person as I've just done several times. She'll be creaming her pants watching this. I bet you fucking hell. Can I say this stuff about my girlfriend? Uh, this is hashtag psycho Flav. Again, I didn't make this up. This was James's idea. I would never have put this in, but people seem to like it. Flav, my foreskin got caught in my exhaust whilst doing a ritual to you. And I can't get it out, any advice? Bobby Bangers, he said, he said, get it circumcised. However, you know this will reduce your sexual satisfaction and ruin your life. Categorically, that isn't true. It's been proven. There are lots of adult male entertainers who seem to have a great time and... Uh, they... So I said I was on my own, but this, <laughs> this has happened. Um, you may know the Wolf of Ball Street. That's me. Uh, oh. Didn't give himself that name, okay. definitely. Uh, and you also may know him if you watch the podcast. A lot of people ask whether or not we're brothers. Or, or I think someone suggested I was your boyfriend. Lovers. Yep. And obviously we're not, we're just, we're just workmates. Workmates, really. Just hang out. Yeah. Like football. A bit like this. It's not awkward at all. No. Um, what do you think of circumcised penises? Uh, do you like them or do you, like, or do you have an opinion? I don't think about them. Okay, because there's been three questions about <laughs> circumcised penises. This. Apparently, they take away pleasure during sex. <laughs> there's loads wrong with the World Cup being hosted in Qatar. 
There's that it's still happening, despite it being proven that the process in which the countries that host it was corrupt and manipulated by money. Or maybe the immigrant workers that work there in inhumane conditions and are not allowed to leave the country without an exit visa. Imagine that, a country that bans immigrants from leaving the country such as the condition that they have to work in. There's another word for that, it's called slavery. And they'd probably want to leave given that they've seen so many of their mates die. Since production begun in December 2010, some 1,200 have been reported dead. The Qatar authorities state that this figure isn't true, but the BBC went to report on it in 2015 and journalists there were arrested. The embassies in Nepal and India state that 1,239 of their workers have died in the year since end 2013. This doesn't even count the many other countries that have supplied workers. The number is obviously meant to be much higher. It's actually likely to be in the tens of thousands by the time the competition comes around. Anyone else going to feel a little bit sheepish watching the World Cup, knowing that blood has been shed, families have been torn apart, and kids have been left fatherless? Or are we going to just follow England regardless? And for those that don't care about any of that, there's an alcohol ban as well. Leave your comments below. Remember to subscribe to Bull Street, and we'll probably see you next week.